Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi, and we're here for episode 301 of Conversations with a Corgi. And I'm losing my corgi, I have him on a pillow because today we're doing a very special episode of Conversations with a Corgi to celebrate my 300th episode happening. We are gonna talk about one of my favorite things, which is the corgi sploot, the mysterious sploot to those who have, you know, some other kind of dog, like maybe a pointer. They don't know about splooting. Maybe some baby pointers have showed them about splooting. But what is a sploot? The sploot is also called the pancake. It is also called all these things I never call it. Um, the frog, the flying corgi, the superman all of those things. I always call it the flying carpet corgi. And that is when my corgi is laying flat down with his feet behind him. And I don't know if I can ask him to do that while he's worried. Down this, down. <laughs> Give me the back piggies. Come here, can you do a splooty? He's splooting in the back end, but I don't think you're gonna be able to see it. Come on, down. Well, I will pick him up and show you. A sploot is when they're laying with their back feet out behind them like this. <laughs> and then you have a very cute view of the fuzz buns when that happens. And apparently for a couple of years, the internet is blowing up with pictures of cute corgis splooting. So a lot of people want to know more about the sploot and I'm one of them. So I spent some time thinking about splooting, looking at sploots over the last couple of months. And of course, anybody with a corgi has seen some of the pictures going around of the different kinds of sploots. We have the half sploot where only one leg is behind. We have the side sploot, which is not a dog sitting with his feet off to the side. A side sploot in the corgi world is a split behind like this. <laughs> and then we also have the sploot upside down, which is when the dog is laying on his back with his feet behind him. Maybe Tristan will do that. Can you lay fall over? Easy. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. And then the sploot behind. There we go. Can you see his little back legs are behind him? This is the upside down sploot. You're, you're an expert splooter. And I have had three corgis. You can sit up now, honey. <laughs> like rolling a pancake here. Um, I've had three corgis, and the first one was an expert splooter. My second one rarely splooted, even when he was a puppy. And this corgi, he's a super splooter. He will sploot anywhere, anytime. It's one of his favorite positions. And splooting has many benefits for dogs it relaxes the hips and the legs and the muscles and the joints of the hind leg um, it can stretch the muscles around the hind legs and relax them and it um, it's a good way to cool down when your dog is hot to get his whole bottom half flat on the floor in the summer even though we have air conditioning here, Tristan often splutes on the tile floor in the kitchen. And even in the winter, if he's been snuggling with me on the sofa under a blanket and it's really hot, he'll get up and do a sploot on the cool tiles in the kitchen. It's a sign of joint health in a dog. So if you've got a dog that doesn't sploot at all, this does not mean your dog has a problem, but that flexibility in the joint uh, means that there's good lubrication in there and the ligaments and tendons are uh, flexible and strong. And so the sploot can be a good sign of health. It's also an aspect of what people call dog yoga for the dog to be doing yoga himself. Splooting is one of those things as is um, the play bow and many of the other positions that dogs get themselves into. Um, and people wanna know, are corgis the only dogs who sploot? My mother used to say, I think we had a Cocker Spaniel at mix at this point, that the sign of a splooting is a sign of a purebred. And that was a misnomer all the way in the 50s and 60s because not many random dogs sploot. <laughs> However, any dog can sploot, any breed, but it is more common in terriers Cocker Spaniels, the Corgi, the French Bulldog, and cats. Lots of cats sploot. Um, if you Google cats splooting on the internet, you will be surprised what you find. So let's take a look at some hip anatomy here. I got out of the closet my 
corgi slash dog anatomy skeleton. So you can see that the hip joint there, it's a ball and socket joint. And I don't know, here's the hip joint right here. You can see it's where the leg joins the pelvis. So the hip joint is right up here. And this guy's pretty glued together. So, well, this leg can actually go into a splute. Let's flip you around. That leg was just broken for the first time this morning, and this is why. So we can show the splute. See how that ball rotates fully in the joint to do the splute? And there's no compromising the rest of the body when that happens. So what you need to do a good splute is a nice round ball at the head of the femur, um, at the top of the leg, and then a nice deep cup for that to sit into so that the ball can really roll around in that joint. And not every breed has that. I'll never forget when I had my little boy Winston hit by a car and I saw his x-rays for the first time I had ever seen a corgi x-ray and it looked like the Flintstones kind of outline of bones. He had such, because corgis are dwarf breed, they have such short, chubby, round bones that it was fascinating. It didn't look like any um, x-ray I'd ever seen. It was pretty interesting. <laughs> and of course, that's what corgis look like. They look like Flintstones dogs. <laughs> so a lot of people want to know, if your dog's splooting, does that mean that he does or does not get hip dysplasia? Well, hip dysplasia is a whole other problem, and it really is a breakdown in that joint itself. Often the surfaces are um, loose and they break down over time and you get rough surfaces between the ball and the joint. Sometimes the socket is really shallow and the hip literally comes out of its joint socket and it's prone to arthritis. And of course, hip dysplasia happens more in big breeds um, like the German Shepherd, the Labrador, Golden Retriever, Poodles, and Rottweilers. And it really is when the joint capsule itself is starting to erode. And how do you know if your dog is having a problem that you might want to get checked for hip dysplasia? They're usually bunny hopping behind, having pain going up and down stairs, reluctant to climb on and off of the sofa, things like that. And of course, one of the things people do um, if they're responsible breeders is test their dogs for hip dysplasia when they are puppies by getting x-rays and also their breeding dogs. And one of the things that can happen when a female is in season, the hip flexor joints become more lax and more mobile. And that happens in humans too. Whenever there's a hormone change in the body, um, happens so that you can have babies too, so things get loose. So that hip may show differently on an x-ray when the dog is in season um, than it does when she is not. So it's best to get your clear x-rays for breeding dogs for hip dysplasia at a time when the dog is not in season. Um, okay, puppies often will do the splute and then outgrow it. Um, that's a time when their joints, like the female dogs in season, are more flexible because the tendons and ligaments are juicier, they bend more, the bones are a little more malleable, the whole dog is a little more flexible, just like with little humans, um, and that really is to prevent them from being massively injured when they have a fall um, and when they're learning to walk and run and jump and do all the things that we do. So um, in a puppy, you may see splooting and then your dog might not sploot later in life which is a terrible thing to me because I love seeing the sploot. And so after I post this, I'm gonna post a picture I have of Tristan splooting at the beach. That's a pretty good picture. And I invite anyone um, to post pictures of animals they have splooting. My sister had a pony that used to sploot. Um, she just would be laying down and on her way to standing up, she'd throw her back legs behind her and drag herself on the carpet, kind of like a dog, well, on the carpet, on the pasture and then back up and get her legs under and stand up. It really is a good way to stretch your knee joint because remember, in a dog, the knee, come here buddy, the knee is right here. So when he's doing that splute, all those muscles that attach to the knee on the front side, the quads, are getting a good stretch, which is what a lot of runners need to do before they run because their quads get very tight from flexing and lifting their legs to run. So, splooting, 
who knew? It's good for your dog. It's not a sign of hip dysplasia. Cats can do it too. And the internet is full of corgi splooting and other dogs too. A lot of pit bulls actually sploot and it really just depends on the individual dog's anatomy. And there's some breeds that have an anatomy that allows splooting more than other breeds. So I say enjoy a sploot. Post some pictures. Let's see a half sploot, a side sploot, an upside down sploot, a full sploot. Let's see lots of sploots on the internet on the Corgi pages where I'll be posting this. And I am so happy to be able to talk about splooting today. I'm so busy and stressed right now. The radio show is gonna be out on Monday at 7 a.m., 7 p.m. Having a really hard time dealing with the mailing list for that. I don't know what the computer is doing. It's not, its brain does not work like human brains. That's what I can say. <laughs> and it doesn't help when you talk to it sweetly or meanly. <laughs> Anyway, so we will be back tomorrow live from a Corgi meetup for the Central Mass Corgi Club, probably in the afternoon. It's a cookie swap and Corgi meetup at someone's house at uh, one o'clock. So sometime between one and three after I get there, maybe even at 1230, I'll try to do my Facebook Live from there. I am sure people will be making, I know one woman in particular, beautiful Corgi cookies. Oh my God, people are so artistic. My corgi cookies are just a shortbread cutout with sugar on them. Nothing special there, but they are delicious and they do look like corgis. <laughs> so we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, the corgi thing should be fun. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, I'll be at my job as an educator. So after tomorrow, we won't be back till Wednesday. And then I'm off for a Tellington Tea Touch class with Linda with horses next weekend. So the Facebook Lives will be there. And then I'm home for a couple days and then back to the dog tea touch class with Linda. You smell like a geranium. <laughs> so, I'm a splitting geranium. Thanks for joining us today. He has a piece of his breakfast stuck in his chomper here. Mommy's going to have to get the toothbrush out. Thanks for joining us. Everybody have a great day. It's beautiful out. Somebody said it felt like Florida outside um, here in Massachusetts this morning, and it really does. That wonderful, fragrant smell of humidity and summer, even though it's still only June 2nd. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon. Have a great day, everybody.